Attack and Rugby is something that has always had to change with the times. If you compare the way the game is played to even 10 years ago, the way phase play is approached and has changed is incredible, and I'm sure the same thing will happen again over the next decade. This happens across all sports in subtle ways as technology and sports science advances. Things are either trimmed out or explored within the game on both sides of the ball. The late 2000s in rugby had the blitz defence, and the 10s introduced us to the wonders of rugby league style diamond structures. Things go in and out of style, and innovation is always just around the corner. As due to sports nature, competition breeds creativity. And one of the ideas that has been floating around in my smooth, egg-like brain is the idea of a positionless backline, and whether it's possible. Let's discuss. So, the concept. Basically, the way I would envision this to be is at its most bare bones, the attack would basically flow like a touch rugby team or a pickup basketball team, where every role in the team flows from one person to the other. Scrum half, fly half, wing, anyone can do anything and is expected to do everything. Now, even as I'm saying this, the gravity of what I'm saying is very evident, as the difficulty involved with doing this is pretty intense, mostly because of two positions in particular being both very important structure-wise in terms of organisation of the forwards and how you're going to play the game, but also very high in demand of skill set. I'm of course talking about the halfbacks. There are skills that a scrum half specifically and especially is expected to be able to do and execute, like box kicking and having a high level of passing ability, that when they're absent are glaringly obvious. But to that I say, all innovations seem impossible at the beginning, and have faith. I provide solutions. But before all that, let's talk about why this is possible. So, I believe that rugby body shapes from the centres outwards have started to get more and more similar the more professional the game has become year after year. Academies or youth setups are producing a lot more of a similar kind of player, with a much more complete skill set than has been the case in the previous years. Probably due to the quality of coaching get a lot better in the game, as well as the time put in by these organisations now giving them a heightened perspective and ability to understand what is needed from players at the top level. Which I believe comes down to roughly two things. First, a baseline level of athletic competence. That's the first non-negotiable to play at the top level. Even the guys you might not perceive to be athletically outstanding when you're watching them on the weekend are operating on a level athletically that's extremely demanding and a lot of people don't get, as if you can't meet that you'll basically just get exposed in defence and be a liability. Second is a certain level of competence at all the core skills of the game. Now this has always been the case, even like in the early days of professionalism, but there is an extra skill that is starting to be expected of players at the top level, added to the previous catching, passing and tackling. Now players are expected to have at least a semi-competent kicking game. Now you may be thinking there are still a lot of centres playing that don't ever kick in games, and you're right, that's out of choice rather than lack of ability. Don't confuse players being more comfortable taking people on rather than putting in grubbers, chips and big long punts all the time with a lack of skill. I often think a lot of players use their ability to kick the ball as a crutch when they run out of options and kind of halt the momentum of their team's attacks. Now why that's all relevant is because I believe that there is a new breed of young players who are much more comfortable in different situations and have the ability and skill sets to be a lot more positionally versatile than generations like mine. Think about a player like Elliot Daly. He's kind of like the undroppable man. He will probably make it into every squad he's available for until he retires, simply due to the fact that he can play every position from the centre outwards. And despite him not really being in form for a while, as a coach, if you were picking a squad, it almost would feel like a mistake not to have him involved due to his ability to cover so many positions. Whether he should start or be involved in the 23 is a topic for another time, but the point is, there are going to be so many more players with that kind of well-rounded skill set coming through the ranks. We even see it now with most young centers coming through being athletically capable to either play in the back three or skill-wise be able to slot in at fly half. Eddie Jones seemed to be the main example of a coach thinking with this kind of mindset, speaking multiple times about wanting his backline to be able to all cover each other, partly because he seems fascinated with the 6-2 split on the bench, which hurts me physically, but he often speaks about the future of rugby involving hybrid players, speaking about backs like Jack Noel and Ollie Thorley being able to play in the back row, which I believe that future is actually a lot closer than you think. The only successful examples I can think of off the top of my head of being this kind of player is Bottier for La Rochelle playing both back row and 12 equally impressively, and Sam Burgess in his brief stint in Rugby Union, which we only really scratched the surface of what he could do. I've spoken before in my video about changing positions in rugby where I discuss the compatibility of positions feeding into each other in the backline. A quick example, most 10s can learn to play 12, most 12s can learn to play 13, and most 13s can learn to play wing, and most wings can learn to play fullback. And I think most backlines actually work in a more positionless system when in open play and free-flowing attack when people realise, where they're sort of 
ideal setups have people like the wings holding the width, but other than that, it's a lot of freestyling out there from 12 outwards. So I actually think that would be the easiest thing for the players to get their heads around, and I believe it would allow, with the right players, you to basically just put your best team out and not really have to worry about balancing the attack that much. The one tricky part of all this is the halfbacks. As for this to work, I believe that you need both a 9 and 10 who are comfortable playing both scrum half and fly half competently, as well as being athletically gifted enough to play on the wing and centre. So basically you need two Antoine Duponts in your team, which may take a while to acquire, putting it mildly. I think there's a beta version of this where 9 and 10 are still playing their usual roles as primary decision makers and controllers of the game's tempo, just to give your attack at least some structure. As I understand that the phrase, a camel is a horse designed by committee, may ring true, as sometimes with team projects, or sports teams in general actually, you need one clear voice and the rest to follow, and add their own unique extra flavours on top of that tasty dish of teamwork. And maybe if you wanted to take this system a little further and evolve it, you could maybe try it out with just the Nine playing his own very specific role, allowing for you to still be allowed to box kick and control the game's tempo with someone who knows what they're doing. But the mecha would be a point where you could pick your usual specialist scrum half, fly half, centers, whatever, but as soon as the game gets flowing, except when you're exiting your 22, it's just about who gets there first and it's just vibes in the tech. I genuinely think at least one version of what I'm talking about will come to pass in the next 10 to 15 years. I'll be 40 and the rugby will be glorious. Anyway, thank you for indulging me. I've seen the strides other sports have made in terms of innovation through players' skill sets. Basketball has more and more players playing the point, despite them not being pass-first playmaker style of players. Pep won the Premier League basically last year with no out-and-out -out striker. And I hope our mad sport continues to push the boundaries of what's possible in our game. Stay safe. Signed, NGJ.